These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Okay, so we know this chapter, uh, a lot of this chapter is about how nuclei decay, which means is how they turn into other nuclei. So if you start with one type of nuclei over time, you'll have less and less of that and more and more of something else. And what this is about, this section is about solving quantitative problems, about how much of the nuclei is left after a certain amount of time. Maybe we should start by making a graph then. So in this chapter, they, they often use the term nuclide. A nuclide is a particular type of nucleus with a particular number of protons and a particular number of neutrons. And if you have a radioactive nuclide, then over time, it's going to decay into a different nuclide. So let's make a graph of the number of the original nuclides that are remaining over time. So if we were going to draw, uh, so this is the number of the original type of nuclides that are remaining. So roughly speaking, what would those graphs tend to look like? Um, a straight line. Try drawing that. Like this. Okay. Like around that. Now let's say that we start with a certain amount of nuclide, and we're looking at a radioactive nuclide. So over time, are we going to have more or less of that radioactive nuclide? Less, it would probably go um, way closer this way. Now remember that this vertical axis tells us the number of nuclides that are remaining. And the horizontal axis here is time. Okay, never mind. So if this is going to be less, mm -hmm. it means that it probably would go this way. That's right. Okay. So we should have a downward sloping negative graph. Slope. Yeah, a negative slope, because we're going to be losing more and more of these nuclides over time. Mm -hmm. Of course, if we made another graph of the new type of nuclide it was turning into, that would be upward sloping. But the, uh, the original nuclides, we're going to have less and less, less and less of the original type of nuclides. That's the basic idea of radioactive decay. Mm -hmm. Of course, some nucleuses, in fact, maybe most nucleuses that you normally look at are not radioactive and they don't decay. But we're focusing on the nucleuses that do decay. If it didn't decay at all, it would look like this. Well, that wouldn't, be very, that wouldn't make for very interesting problems. So in this section, we're focusing on the, on the unstable nucleuses that do decay, not the stable nucleuses that don't decay. So I'll erase this. Um, yeah. One more time to the back a little bit. Um, is like all atoms do like, I mean, all molecules, do they all like uh, decay or just particular number like, st like in a periodic table? Is that like from? Right. So in fact, some nucleuses are stable and some are unstable. Stable. So some decay and some don't decay. Yeah, which ones decay? Well, I don't think you'd be expected to have that uh, memorized. Oh, okay. Um, you, you generally be told for this section here that we have a radioactive oh, nucleus. Okay. You can kind of predict it because there's a graph in your book that shows there's a certain band of uh, ratio of neutrons to protons that tends to be stable. So. Yeah, that's this graph here. Oh, okay, we'll draw this in the class. Right, so here's the number of protons and here's the number of neutrons, and... Because this is a, probably the real one, the original line. I think that this graph is just showing the stable nuclides. Mm -hmm. So anything that's in this band would be stable, okay. and anything that's above or below the band would be unstable. Oh, okay. So you could look up, you could, if you knew we're looking at a particular type of nucleus, you could look up how many protons it has and how many neutrons, mm -hmm. and then you could see where it was on the graph. And if it was in the band of stability, you would predict it's it would stable. be stable. 
if, if it's, it's below, above, above or below, you would put oh, it okay. unstable. That's good. Yeah. You generally don't need to think about that, though, for this section on the kinetics of decay. Because mm -hmm. okay. for the section on kinetics, they'll just tell you that this is a radioactive nucleus okay. and that it's going to decay. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Now, we figured out that this line must be downward sloping. Um, now, the way that decay works is that you, um, you lose a set percentage of the nucleuses every second. For example, you might lose, say, 10% per second, or 20% per second, or 30% per second, or 0.01% per second. So I might, maybe I'll use 10% per second because that's the easiest to understand. So we could say that the, um, and that is what is called the decay constant. The decay constant tells you the percent that's going to decay per second. Okay. For an example, we might say, that it's, say, 10%, just because that's easy to work with. So you might lose the first 10% after one second, and then you would lose 10% of what's left in the next second, and then you would uh, okay. lose 10% of that in the next second. Mm -hmm. OK. So you're going to lose a constant percent. Now, if you think about it, this doesn't represent a constant percent of loss. It pr represents a constant number of loss. Since this, has, since this is a straight line, it has a constant slope. So this might represent just, say, 10 nucleuses lost per second. But we're not just losing 10 per second. We're losing, say, 10% per second. So what this would actually look like is a curve. Oh, okay. The radioactive decay looks like a curve. that's asymptotically going to be approaching zero. If you think about it, if you're losing 10% every second, you're never going to get all the way to zero, because okay. you just lose 10% of whatever is remaining. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I should say, you never get to zero for sure. There's always some chance that there's at least one nucleus zero left, point. because eventually you just have a 10% chance of losing that one final nucleus. Well, we don't need to worry too much about the details for when there's only one nucleus. Mm -hmm. The point is that the curve looks like it's going to be asymptotically approaching the horizontal axis. Okay, but it should start crossing this, act, crossing this vertical axis. You start with a definite number of nuclei. Now, the symbol that we usually use for um, the nuclei, or, or for the number of particles, is capital N. N stands for the number of individual particles, or molecules. You might have noticed that in chemistry we use lowercase n for the number of moles. Yeah. Lowercase n is the number of moles, but capital N is the number of individual particles. Well, here's the number of individual nucleuses. So capital N here would be the number of individual nucleuses that are left. So what should I call this? Well, I could call this n0, because that's the original number of nucleuses or nuclei. It's the original number of nucleuses that we started with. Okay. Um, and then we can talk about how we're losing a certain amount of that per second. So for example, suppose that we start with uh, one million nuclides, and k equals 10%. How would we figure out how many decays we're going to get from that in the first second? If k is 10% decay per second and we started with a million nucleuses, how many would decay in the first second? Uh, divide by, I mean, take like 10% of it? Yeah, 10% so of a million. Of a million so That's right. So you would basically do 0.1 times a million to see 100,000 decays per second. Well, then the general formula is that 
if you want to know how many decays there were per second, that's going to be K times the number of nucleuses. That's what we did here. So we had, we, in this case, we were losing 10% of the number of nucleuses. So this tells us how many decays we're going to get per second. If you take, if you're losing 10%, then that would be 10% of the number of nucleuses. It tells you the decays per second. So the decays per second is what's called the activity or the radioactivity. Mm -hmm. uh, and the symbol your book uses for that is A. So decay per second is a, a um... Yeah. A, activity, is in units of decays per second. We kind of proved that with this little numerical example. If you start with a million and you're losing 10% per second, then you're going to start with about uh, 100,000 decays per second. 